Hey everybody, in this video I've got a leaky tire and I'm going to show you how to diagnose and fix the most common problem that causes leaks in tires like this. Let's get started. So this tire is actually from my snow blower and as you can see it's really pretty flat. It's had this slow leak for a long time and every time I go out to do some snow blowing I just have to put a little air in it and it holds air for a little while, long enough that I can get the job done, but a couple days later this tire has gone completely flat again. Now even though this is from a snow blower, this leak that I'm going to be taking care of can happen on a car or a bicycle or an ATV or a motorcycle. And that's because it is leaking from this valve right here. This is called a Schrader valve. And I'm going to show you how to determine whether the leak is coming from the valve or from somewhere else. And once you can determine that it is coming from the valve, I'll show you how to fix it. So the first thing we need to do is determine if the leak is in fact coming from that Schrader valve or if it's coming from somewhere else in the tire. To do that, we're going to need a little bit of soapy water. So in this spray bottle, I've mixed up some tap water with some dish soap to make a nice soapy solution. And we're going to spray this on the tire to see exactly where the leak is. So if your tire is completely flat like this one, you need to pump it up to make sure it's got some air pressure in it before you start. With the tire pumped up so it's got some pressure in it, next, flip over to the back side and use your spray bottle to spray the entire surface of the tire. Now if you don't have a spray bottle, you can just dribble some water on there or pour it out of a bowl. You just need to get a layer of soapy water on the tire to look for any leaks. Great, so now I've got a soaking wet tire, but how am I supposed to use this to find leaks? Well, if you look carefully, even though there's a bunch of bubbles on top of this tire, none of them are growing any larger and there aren't any new bubbles appearing. Those are telltale signs that you've got a leak. So look carefully, take your time, and make sure there's no new bubbles showing up. After you've inspected the first side and there's no leaks, next flip it over and spray along the tread everywhere. And again, check to see if there's anywhere that it's leaking. Now if you find any leaks on the tread, unfortunately, the technique that I'm going to show you in this video is not going to help. But I do this just to verify that there are not leaks anywhere else in the tire before I repair the valve. So far this tire looks great. Now we're going to spray this side. And I'm getting the whole surface of the tire first before I focus on the valve. Again, I'm just eliminating any other possible places that leaks can be occurring. This face seems to be holding air just fine too. So now that I've checked all of the rubber of the tire, we're going to check that valve. And as you can see, there are tons of bubbles coming right out of the middle of that valve. So that's definitely the source of our leak. All right, so now that we've verified the problem is definitely with the valve, we're going to replace the core of that valve, and this process is really simple. I'm going to be using this kit that I got off of Amazon. There's a link down in the description below. This kit comes with the tool you need to use to remove the valve core, and it comes with some replacement cores. So this is the tool that comes in the kit, and it's one of those multifunction tools. You can re-thread the valve core, or you can clean out the threads for the valve stem. But the only part of this tool we're really going to need is this end right here, this little slotted wrench. This is going to be used to remove the valve core. Here's how it works. So you just take this wrench and fit it down over your valve stem and twist it until it slots in like that. Then you use it to thread out your valve core. Now this tire is under pressure, so this is going to make a fair bit of noise as it lets the air out of the tire. Be careful as you get close to letting this thing out that you don't let the valve stem go shooting across the room. They can do that. So there you go, we've removed the old valve core. So here's a quick side-by-side -side comparison. You can see the old valve here on the right is really corroded and looks pretty nasty. So the way these valves work, this little button on the top here is pushed down when you fill up your tire with air. And when that gets pushed down, it opens the lower part of the valve. But when the valve gets old and corroded like this one, it doesn't seat again very well and it leaks. So replacing the valve is as simple as just putting in the new one and using the same tool to thread it in, the opposite of how you took out the old one. Don't put these in too tight, it can be easy to over torque them. Just get it till it's snug, that's all it takes. Alright, with that valve stem installed, let's put some air in the tire. And then spray it with the spray bottle again to see if it's leaking.
And as you can see, there's no leaks, so we've repaired this tire. All right, this tire is fixed and ready to put back on the snow blower. Now, I'm really glad that it was the valve stem on this. As I showed at the very beginning, you have to check the whole tire to make sure that that's where it's actually leaking from. It might be leaking from somewhere else, which is a little bit more involved. You might have to replace an inner tube. You might have to get a whole new tire. I'm really glad that I didn't have to in this case because that valve stem repair kit only costs a few dollars and a whole new tire is actually really, really expensive for this machine. Hey, if you've enjoyed this video or learned a little something, you can let me know with a thumbs up down below. And if there's something I could have done better or you got some good feedback for me, you can tell me about that down in the comments. If you wanna see more videos like this, you can always think about subscribing, but there's no pressure there, of course. And as always, Thank you very much for watching. Now, there's snow in the forecast. I gotta get this back together. See you later. Oh, hang on, don't go yet. I just remembered there's one more really important thing. So it's really important that you put a valve stem cap on your valve when you're done repairing it. Something like this is the kind you'd normally find on like a bicycle tire. And it's okay, but it's not great. Instead, today, I'm gonna be using this one. It's made out of aluminum, and it's got a nice rubber gasket on the inside there that's gonna make sure that this gets sealed up really well. Now this won't hold pressure necessarily, but that gasket's gonna keep water and debris and dust and grit from getting down into that valve stem at all, which is probably what caused that corrosion in that valve stem in the first place.